Making important decisions. That's what we're talking about here today on The Daily Race. So glad to have you as you're getting up this morning, whether you're just waking up or uh, you're watching this maybe a little bit later as you're heading into work or uh, hanging around the house. Whatever it is, I'm so glad you're starting the day with us, starting our day intentionally with God as we have been, well, since yesterday, starting a study on the book of Acts. Uh, This is an account of the early church, the first generation of the church, and really an account of God leading them, the the Holy Spirit's presence, and what happens from then on. Today we're going to talk about a real important decision, the the first important decision these disciples had to make, and what that looked like, because I think there are some important principles here that we can apply to our lives when it comes to making decisions. We do that every single day, right? And we don't think about the little ones. Um, we're, we're constantly making decisions, uh, but the big ones, right? The, the ones where, you know, it's changing the course of, uh, of direction in our lives. The big ones where it's, you know, adding, uh, making uh, important choices. Uh, so many different ways we make decisions. This is the very first one here that the early church had. We're going to take a look at it here in Acts chapter 1. So yesterday we heard about the Great Commission where Jesus gives the disciples uh, his instructions. He sends them out and talks about the Holy Spirit being upon them and to go and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. So this is what they're doing in the meantime. It says this, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. We're in verse 12 of uh, chapter 1, um, which was a distance of about a half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house they were staying. These are the, here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, son of uh, the Zealot, which is Peter, um, or no, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. So there's two Judases in the group. This other Judas is from now on known as the son of James. Judas, the son of James. Don't want to be confused with the other Judas. Um, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Now that word together there, I mean, we just kind of glance over, that's a word that we use all the time. But the actual Greek word there is something that Luke uses quite a bit in the book of Acts and is only found one time outside of the book of Acts. So it's it's a real specific word together. Um, It's more than just being physically present together. It's united in in one heart and one mind. These disciples weren't just hanging out. They were, they were, or these apostles weren't just hanging out. They were in a tight bond. They were of one mind, one heart, one spirit praying together, uh, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. It says, During this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. So there's more than just these 12 apostles. There's at least, it says, 120 believers who, were, who would come in and out, and they came up to this upper room. So Peter addresses them. And what Peter does is he goes back to the book of Psalms, and he really is comforting the group. They have so much going on. They're, they're confused. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit. Jesus is gone, and the elephant in the room is Judas betrayed them. Judas sold out Jesus. So they begin, Peter begins speaking about this and points back to a psalm that predicts uh, that the scriptures had to be fulfilled in this way. He says this, Brothers, he said, the scripture had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who, was guided, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared in the ministry with us. Peter continued, This is what was written in the book of Psalms. It says, Let his home become desolate with no one living it. It also says, Let someone else take his position. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus, from the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. So a witness of Jesus' res- resurrection, that, that witness is an apostle. So Jesus appointed the, originally, the 12 apostles, uh, the 11 men that we had just read there, as well as Judas. These were to be his official witnesses. Um, as we've mentioned, there were many disciples of Jesus, many followers of Jesus, um, but these 12 were these significant figures that that Jesus spent more time with and saw Jesus' entire ministry. And as they are getting ready to to move forward, expectation that the Holy Spirit is going to come, they're going to take this mission out. Peter, as reading scripture, interprets, hey, we need to fill this role. Jesus appointed 12. We need to have 12 in here moving forward. 
So he goes down the requirements, just some very common sense requirements. This person who's going to fulfill this role must have been a witness of Jesus' entire ministry from baptism all the way up through resurrection. So that in and of itself limited the pool. Uh, they began, there were people that fit that category. There were people that didn't fit that category. Eventually, they nominated two people. Joseph called Barsabbas and Matthias. And then they all prayed. O oh Lord, you know every heart. Show us which one of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in the ministry, for he has deserted us and gone to where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other eleven. So, what did they do? They had some common sense like requirements. Hey, this is what the person fits under. Narrowed the pool down. They spent time in prayer and they asked God to lead them on their choice. This is really the pattern for how we make decisions. There is all the things present when it comes to any decision that we make, whether it's taking a new job or relocating, um, relationship issues. We first type, what does scripture say? What are the common sense approaches to this? Like what is, what's just conventional wisdom say about this? We pray, we ask God to guide us, and then we make a decision and move forward. Now this, this isn't groundbreaking, right? Like this is, I haven't told you anything that, you know, oh, I've never heard that before. I, I get it. it. It's not radical this morning, but we see the early church instituting these simple things and we see them all together. I think sometimes when we take common sense approaches to things. Okay, what is logically the next step? What makes sense to do in this moment? Sometimes we think that that's not being a person of faith, that we're not, you know, trusting God fully. But who gave us our minds? Who, who gave us our, our common sense? God gave us that. Now, if we do that independently of scripture and prayer, then we can find ourselves maybe missing out on some faith steps that God wants us to take. But combined together, Hey, God, this is what I'm, I feel like you're leading me to do. Uh, as I'm reading scripture, this kind of seems the right direction. I don't see any, anything in scripture that's, that's opposing this, this direction. But God, before I move forward, hey, let me know. Shut this door if this is not the direction you want me to take. Now, give me an uneasiness so, so that I don't move forward. Give me a better alternative if that's what you want me to take. It, it's a posture of using the mind that God's given us, using the resources that he's given us, his word, and a conversation that's two directions, <laughs> asking God and waiting to listen. That's making decisions. And here, this very first important decision with the disciples, uh, replacing the 12th apostle, that they're going to be the, the key witnesses moving forward, the original 12. Now, there are going to be other apostles moving forward, uh, other people that, that are sent to proclaim the word, but not this special designation, not, not to fit this specific requirement of the original 12 that were there from the beginning to the end, uh, that had been with Jesus, that had witnessed it all. And these are kind of the key apostles moving forward, uh, although we're going to see other apostles come up um, that, that didn't meet all those requirements, but were appointed by Jesus, uh, who were sent out by the church by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So that, that apostle is a very important term as we're going to be working through the book of Acts. So we learned about apostles. We also learned about or confirmed about how we make decisions today. I hope you have a great, great day. Let's pray. Let's ask God to guide us and lead us today. Let's celebrate what he's doing in our lives. And then we're going to get ready to go. Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much just for your, your guidance. And we thank you so much that you're with us. God, we thank you for just the minds that you've given us. The, the ability to, to make decisions, the, the way to, to process information that comes in. God, we just thank you so much for that. We thank you you've given us the minds that we have. But God, we also recognize that we have biases. And we have feelings that sometimes shape how we process things. So God, we thank you that you have given us your word, and that you've laid out for us what is true and what is right. And we thank you that you're available to us as, as you are right now, having a conversation. You guide us and direct us. You've given us your Holy Spirit. God, lead us today and help us to make good decisions, decisions that are honoring to you, uh, that are moving us forward in, in your plan and purpose for our lives. And God, I just pray for, for those who are sick. God, as I, I got back into the office yesterday, just hearing so many people that, that have some serious uh, medical issues coming up. God, I pray for those with cancer. God, I, I pray for, for Jim this morning, God, as he's going in for, for surgery tomorrow. God, I pray that you would just be with the doctors and give them skill and wisdom as they are, are uh, helping him and um, going through the procedure, God, I just pray for the recovery process. I pray for Tony as she comes alongside him as well.
God, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness to us. And we pray that you would just continue to guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.